Good day, everyone. Freelancer is here, and with it, a year and a half since my very first episode of Facts and Features. To celebrate these two occasions, I've compiled all of my favorite glitches, and a few new ones, into one special mega episode of Facts and Features. While some of this video was recorded before Freelancer's release, I've personally confirmed that everything I feature still works after the update. Scaring civilians in trespassing areas prevents them from noticing you trespassing. Scaring civilians is easiest done with two silenced shots near them, but it can also be done with gunshot noises, explosives, or even just pulling a nearby fire alarm. It's important to note that this feature only stops them from seeing you trespass. They can still notice you if they're enforcers, or if you're holding a visible illegal item. Panicking guards, on the other hand, can render them totally blind to you, but it must be done by either shooting near them three times, or shooting a person in their sight. Notice that you must be outside a certain radius from where you initiated the panic, and you must avoid committing blatant crimes like shooting, or else they will shoot you on sight. Since guards often panic others around them, this can be a very potent glitch. Here I am, using it to enter Martinez's compound without getting spotted. Stay with the boss, we gotta get out! Come on, what are you waiting for? Let's go! And now, I'm behind the meeting room, which is the perfect place to lay a trap that will kill Andrea later on. This one's an oldie, but a goodie. Player-made contracts can call for the use of an explosive device, which usually means they'll cause a loud explosion that attracts everyone to your area. However, you can circumvent this by using breaching charges, which are both considered explosive devices and are practically silent to NPCs. If you don't want people to ruin the spirit of your contract, then I recommend substituting an explosive device kill with an explosive pen kill. Both of the explosive pens are considered melee weapons by the game, which means you can tag kills to be done with those specific items, and they'll explode after being thrown at full volume. I advise using the new fountain pen over the old pen from Hitman 2, since that one hasn't been available in a few years. Speaking of tar- Speaking of contracts, if you're ever making one, I beg you, for your own sake, please turn off the music. When you've marked a target in contracts mode, you've technically completed all of your objectives in the fraction of a second between marking them and having them added to your objective list, which means the game starts the exfiltration music and just keeps on playing it. Forever. The exfiltration music in Hitman's 1 and 2 can already get repetitive in normal play, but having to listen to it for between 10 minutes and an hour while making a contract is downright annoying. Spare yourself the pain and just turn the music off so you can listen to something else. A single door can muffle most noises enough for NPCs to not hear them including close combat, any noise distraction item, and any concussive explosive. Look at how the three of these noises compare between when the door is open and when it's closed. Say, I... If there are two doors between a noise and any NPCs who might hear it, then it's completely silent. 
even the loudest noises, like unsilenced gunshots and explosions. Look how with only one door, these guys can hear it, even though the other door has someone much closer to the noise. The Midnight Black Suit, included in Hitman 2's expansion pass, is allowed to be in the area of Don Yates' villa. It's not permitted inside the house itself, but the area around it, including its roof, is permitted. The guards protecting it will even give you a frisk before letting you in. Oh yeah, if you want to come through, I'm going to have to pat you down. All right, cool? all good. Go on. Just relax. You'll be in your way again in a second. And while we're talking about premium outfits with special effects, the white shadow suit, unlocked by completing the Prolof Parable Deluxe Escalation in the Carpathian Mountains, is hostile everywhere in Hokkaido. What are you doing here? No, no, no. Keep those hands Whoa. behind your head. So is the tactical turtleneck, but that's a different mission. Speaking of Patient Zero, this gorgeous remix of the level was so big that IOI even changed who this heart is for. It wouldn't make sense for it to be Soders' heart, because Soders isn't in the map, as the operating theater hosts Owen Cage. Instead, destroying the heart is considered a non-target kill. Instead of killing Soders when it's destroyed, it kills a hidden NPC over here. Outside of the mission's boundaries is a man in a biohazard suit named Kokoro, which I'm told is Japanese for heart. Hokkaido also has another mission, the Snow Festival, where Soders is weirdly present and correct in the operating theater. Destroying the heart in this mission should kill Soders as it does in Cytus Inversus, but instead it does... nothing. Shooting Soders in the face counts against you, but destroying his heart is just fine. Deceased. Placing coins on the ground, which is done by either holding caps lock, I think, on keyboard, or both bumpers on a controller, can serve as a quick and useful lore for NPCs. NPCs are also able to open any door in any map, regardless of what keys they carry or outfit they wear. Hey, look, asshole! Using both of these, one can unlock any door by simply placing an item that will attract an NPC right in front of it, which will cause them to open it. Wow. If manipulating NPCs is a bit too finicky for you, here's a fact. Since doors in Hokkaido are unlocked by RFID chips rather than keys or cards, you can open one by simply dragging a dead or unconscious NPC with the appropriate disguise to the appropriate location, effectively turning that person into a human key. This even works when they're hidden in containers. The boxes that are within a close enough proximity to keep the door unlocked are few and far between. Guards act weird at checkpoints. If you're close enough to them, they don't react to any kind of stimulus, be it coins, noises, or emetics. Folks, anything can still happen. They start to behave more normally when you move away from them, but you can still interrupt this by coming back. When guards are in this state of absolute focus on you, they can spot you instantly when you try to trespass into their territory. Fortunately, getting spotted like this does not always void Silent Assassin if you return to a public area quickly enough. And while we're discussing checkpoints, did you know that you can smuggle one of any illegal item past a frisking point, provided it fits in a briefcase? Simply walk up to the checkpoint, place your briefcase on the ground, just like a coin, and submit it to the frisk. Then you can pick up your briefcase and move on, with the guards none the wiser. Thank you, please proceed. What do you mean? 
If you take cover against this wall and quickly climb it, 47 will vault through it. Vector is the only sniper mission where 47 can run out of ammunition. Can we just take a second to appreciate the physics on these bullet casings? There's more ammo by the school and bag, but note that it's from the boxes near the bag, not the bag itself. Now that we're out of ammo, we're soft locked. 47 cannot leave, 47 cannot shoot, and 47 cannot wait until his targets die of their infection. Back in Hitman 2016, that glowing ammo bag I pointed out earlier would provide infinite ammo to avoid this, but it seems to have been broken at some point around the release of Hitman 2. It's possible to get yourself into a hand-to-hand -hand combat loop that doesn't cause sufficient damage for either 47 or the guard to get knocked out. The Bartholomew Hornswoggle Escalation for Haven Island is better programmed than the Vector. The final stage demands that you kill a target with a cannon, and in order to make sure you can't softlock yourself by wasting your shot and powder, the game gives you infinite quantities of both. This gets very silly, very quickly. If you provoke Tamar Vidal into her showdown with 47 and kill her before she goes hostile, her guards will automatically panic and search the area, even if you do it out of sight with a silent and unsuspicious method like poison. I haven't done much testing with this, but it also initiated panic across the map, allowing me to easily sneak past trespassing areas and rendezvous with Don Yates, who is going into lockdown in his basement. Another instance of these telepathic guards can be seen in Hawks Bay, where getting spotted by anyone in the house will panic everyone else in the vicinity, even if nobody would normally be aware. On the complete opposite side of the spectrum are bodyguards. Oh, this is Ridiculous, someone else deal with this shit. God damn it! Sometimes, when you kill a target without causing any commotion, their bodyguards will eventually notice that their VIP is gone, and will start wandering around the level to find them, sometimes even calling out for them like they're a lost child. Has anyone seen Miss Yamasaki? Oh, did I lose the package? 
Where's the goddamn VIP? Hello, you can come out now. O Genki Daska. Are you here? It's safe now. Please show yourself. Where's the client? Miss Yamasaki! Are you hiding somewhere? Shit. Silence guns are silenced. This doesn't just apply to 47's guns, but also to guns carried by NPCs, which can lead to some hilarious results. I got it. Notice that the woman was attracted, not panicked, meaning she only heard the guards' yells, and nobody in the neighboring rooms is aware of the gunfight that happened in here. Or at least, they weren't before Stuyvesant came. Marcus Stuyvesant won't be a problem anymore. Dino Bosco is hyped up as being a harder than average target, boasting a full suit of real armor that protects him against damage from bullets. Just take a look at how many body shots it takes to kill Dino. Versus how many it takes to kill Marco Abbiati. That is your target, Marco Abbiati. Target down. Who knew conservatives were so fragile? Dino might have been harder to kill when the Icon released in 2016, but he's one massive weakness. Tweaks to game balancing. Hitman 2 made a number of changes to combat to make it more fun, and many of these changes have stayed in today's version of Hitman, including the addition of a ridiculous headshot multiplier on the ICA-19 and its variants. Now to kill Dino, all it takes is a single well-placed shot. In addition to this, the Seeger 300 Ghost and all other Seeger variants with 4 zoom levels deal a stupid amount of damage, which is sufficient to kill the most obnoxious target in Hitman in one shot. And while we're talking about snipers, did you know that the Berlin Egg Hunt contains the single most powerful sniper in the entire game? The ICA Druzina 34, which is on a railing at the top of the radio tower, contains the magic ammo from the sniper assassin maps, including wall-piercing bullets and shockwave ammo. I believe this is also the only silenced gun on the map that's out in the open, so it can also be useful for quietly getting another silenced weapon, the duck baller. Or at least it would be if I didn't waste all its ammo. Call sign Niner. I think someone is firing a gun. Changing your disguise, generally speaking, is considered an illegal action by NPCs. This can get pretty funny when NPCs shoot you to death for changing into outfits that you're supposed to be wearing, such as these shorts in your own hut on Haven Island, or changing into your new uniform after getting a promotion from your boss. Interestingly, the biohazard suits in Sapienza and Hokkaido are exceptions for this, but only if you're dressed as the correct personnel a researcher in Sapienza, and a surgeon in Hokkaido. However, while it's legal to change into these rubber suits when they're fresh off the rack, you're not allowed to wear your old clothes again, nor change back into a used suit. If you ever plan on making any Hitman videos featuring dialogue, please use this feature. Holding the aim button without any items equipped zooms the camera and boosts your dialogue volume, which is very useful if you find yourself in an environment with a lot of loud noise. On the subject of noise, this vacuum in Hokkaido is louder than a gunshot. While most distraction objects have a finite range, this vacuum doesn't allowing you to attract everyone in any of Hokkaido's missions towards it. This thing is noisy enough to trigger morticians, security guards, and even Kokoro, though he refuses to move off his platform and turn it off. This isn't even the only noisy item on Hokkaido. The ice machine in the hospital security office is also very noisy, and can also lure Kokoro in the same way. If you ever find yourself hiding in a container to avoid combat, which I'm sure many of you will be doing in Freelancer, remember that you can reload all of your weapons while hiding. 
While well, I wish we had the option to do more things, like triggering remote explosives, it looks like we'll have to stick with our guns. The like and subscribe buttons are down. Proximity mines suck. Don't use them. If you need to drop your proximity device to, say, pass a frisk, then it will automatically arm itself, making it impossible to pick it back up without... But wait, the voices in my head cry, what about the RFID explosive? Well, theoretically, the RFID explosive should be less likely to spontaneously detonate, as it's supposed to be triggered by proximity to a coin instead of to a person. But as we've discussed before, the bomb is quite yes. introverted, so when it sees a large crowd, it... <laughs> Therefore, the most useful proxy bomb must be the micro-proximity explosive, Good. because it's the only one that can pass frisks without murdering you. But it's still a micro-explosive, so it still sucks in its own way. How about we just don't use proximity bombs at all? When the game flags to you that it's a crime to pick up an illegal item, it's technically lying to you. It's a crime to be caught holding the item after you've picked it up, but the act of actually picking up the item is fine. NPCs won't spot you unless the object is in 47's hand. This distinction is usually meaningless, since all items are automatically equipped when you first pick them up, but this bit of knowledge can help you in two ways. First, it's usually fine to pick up illegal items when NPCs are looking at you, as long as they're not too close and you put them away quickly. Second, guns are never automatically equipped as long as you already have a matching one in your inventory, meaning it can be entirely legal to pick up guns in public areas. You okay? Good day. Hey, what's up with the gangsta act? Put the gun away, okay? Hmm. I'm sure I saw something. Nah. I'm just tired. It's worth noting that this rule does not apply to items that are marked as illegal, but are legal to hold, like the cane of Dartmoor. Picking those up yes. is a crime, and will get you spotted much faster than grabbing a normal legal item. You look like you've done something you shouldn't. Am I right? For those keeping score, a cane is more legal to take than a letter opener, which is more legal than a gun. I love this game. Oh my god, please stop doing that! Stop strangling that person! I don't there are two varieties of body dumps in Hitman. One just moves the body around within the level, which is useful for getting it around the map, but it's not a proper hiding place. The other kind of body dump does properly hide the body making it just as impossible for NPCs to spot it as it would be if you hit it in a box, and rewarding you with the appropriate XP. I've found two railings that have been incorrectly put into the latter category by the developers, which has led to some interesting results. Here's the first one on Hokkaido. Note the XP gain for dumping the body, and the green guns despite the messy kill. Even when people are lured towards the body, they almost completely ignore it. This guy even looks directly at it, and continues walking by. And here's the second one on Mendoza. He can't be serious. He just can't. Once again, messy kill with a green silent assassin indicator on the lower left. Unfortunately, while NPCs act like these bodies are invisible, they also respond negatively if they see you dragging one. That's a human being. What? Since the drop off Don's railing is very short, it even works on unconscious bodies. This is very odd because it's the only way to hide an unconscious target's body. While you're not allowed to throw throwables at it, you are allowed to shoot him to kill him. Another more basic fact, 
Gartas are always given a white highlight in Instinct. This can be useful for finding undercover guards hiding among civilians, like this guy. I've heard that this highlight can also help you find assassins during showdowns. The speed and distance at which NPCs spot 47 depends on a number of factors, including proximity, trespassing, and of course, whether or not 47 has an illegal item equipped. Now, one would expect that holding two illegal objects at once would be twice as illegal, but holding a small illegal item actually overwrites the visibility penalties from holding a larger illegal item on your back reducing the speed and distance at which NPCs spot you. If you ever find yourself in the position of having to carry a sniper or SMG across the map, remember to hold out your pistol while you do it. Yeah, yeah. It's not illegal to throw non-lethal items at NPCs. In order for it to be a crime, a single NPC must see both you throwing the item and the other NPC that you threw it at. And since it's not considered inherently suspicious to throw blunt objects everywhere, you can hide in crowds while you do it, which makes sure nobody can see you committing the crime. If you don't care about silent assassin or non-target kills, this is potentially very powerful, as it allows you to throw a briefcase with an explosive in it at your target without getting spotted. Once your target is asleep with the bomb, detonate it for the free kill and get out of there. If you don't mind getting spotted and want to quickly knock someone out without a melee weapon, you can shoot them once in the leg and then shoot them again anywhere else. And then you'll get a prompt to quickly knock them out. It's basically useless since IOI nerfed in Hitman 2 and again in Hitman 3, but it does look badass. You can do something similar with the fiber wire. While most melee items can't be used normally on panicked NPCs, the fiber wire has no such restrictions. So if you want to fiber wire two people next to each other, you can shoot one in the leg, garrot their comrade, and then quickly garrot the guy you shot. Again, not very practical for most applications, but still very cool. If you shoot Sierra Knox's car with any golden weapon, the game plays a slide whistle. This can be done if you have just about any golden gun in the game on your person, including the gold baller and the DAC gold covert. Down. Next up, Robert Knox. But sadly, Dr. Not the Golden Dragon. Down. Next up, Robert Knox. Looking at your objectives when doing contracts can help you intuit how to optimally complete them. For example, targets are ordered by when the contract creator killed them, so I can tell by looking at this contract made by one of my friends that they likely started in the palace attic and moved their way down to the basement. Selecting a target to see kill conditions in detail can also give hints away, especially where suit kills are concerned. When the disguise is a suit, you can see which suit was used, which can help give away the start used by the creator. If you know they prefer bringing their own suit, then seeing that they're wearing the default robes in Hokkaido could mean that they start in something else and switched into that during the mission. Or in this case, the first target being in the attic, and 47 wearing a custom suit rather than the default tuxedo, means that my friend probably start in the attic rather than the auction. Of course, if the contract creator is smart enough, they'll know about this stuff, and they'll go out of their way to scramble the target order in suits to fuck with you, which is always hilarious. Just you wait. I will be streaming today and the day after at 6 p.m. Universal Coordinated Time. That should be the evening in Europe, afternoon on the American East Coast, and really inconvenient in Australia. I haven't played Freelancer yet, so you'll get to see me learn how to do both unscripted entertainment and play Freelancer live. It'll be great. You can follow the stream at twitch.tv slash should be on your screen right now, and links to both my Twitch and my Discord server, where any further updates will be posted, are in the description. And now, back to our regular programming. The Ark Society on the Isle of Scale has an opportunity to kill one of the level's female targets with an Iron Maiden. Understandably, when you push one of them in, they're quite distressed and let out a scream. No! 
One target down. Nice work, 47. However, this same screaming noise plays no matter who's pushed into the maiden, which can be pretty funny. No! 47, that was our only lead on the partners. Abort mission. While we're fucking around with Edwards, have you ever tried talking to him while dressed as an entertainer? The Washingtons are dead. I yeah, have hi, the kill you? switch. What did you say? How could you know about that? You will head towards the harbor. No sudden moves. No signs or warnings. I will trigger the device if I need to. I know you. The boy in the picture. You have his eyes. And to fuck with Edwards even more, because that's always the best thing to do in Hitman, have you ever knocked him out right before exfiltrating with him? Enough talking. You'll do plenty of that later. We're here. Get on the boat. No! 47, that was our own Florida man's ponytail is physics, but in order to maintain performance, it's optimized from far away, just like any other physics object. So it's just suspended in the air behind his head when you get far away enough. Doors can be blasted open with weapons that are powerful, fast, or explodey enough. But sensibly, if a door is on a slider, then it cannot be blown open. The sole exception to this I've found are the sliding doors in Sapiens' underground laboratory, which, due to what I have to guess were some kind of limitations on the devs from when the first level was made in 2016, can be shot or blown open like any other. Some NPCs, usually civilian NPCs, don't notice you trespassing in their areas. Always pay attention to which people have white pips about them, because which NPCs won't spot you can sometimes be as surprising as the ones that do. Welcome back, Initiate. Have you ever tried doing Raider's Yacht, the very first level of the game, silent assassin suit only? Some people would think it's impossible. But once you realize that only guards can see you, and hiding in crowds still yeah, works when trespassing, it feels a little bit more feasible. It appears ahead of its time, maybe even more. Speaking of surprises while trespassing, there's a lot of fun to be had when you're caught in a place that NPCs can't access. There are few places where you can be spotted NPCs that can't path to you, but when you do find them, it's golden. We all know that guns are the best tools. They can shoot people, they can dump heavy objects on people, they can distract people, they can blow people up, whatever your heart desires. One of their many uses is remotely triggering distraction items like fuse boxes or... sinks? If you think it's weird that you can shoot a box full of fragile fuses and a random mortician can fix it, IOI has you covered. Some distraction items, after being shot three times, will be broken beyond repair. NPCs even have special dialogue for it. My money's on someone did this on purpose. Some NPCs cannot be poisoned normally. Owen Cage, for example, is already sick, so shooting him with a seeker will just kill him in an extremely comical fashion. Unfortunately, this is not counted as a poison kill, just a generic one. This can be contrasted with the man who's being interrogated by Reza Zaydan in Marrakesh. 
If he's hit with the Seeker, he'll walk his way to the nearest bathroom, facing no opposition from the nearby guards. If you decide you want to violently bust him out of captivity, then he starts acting a little wonky. Jesus! I think this is because the prisoner is part guard, part civilian, and his AI doesn't know how to handle combat because, well, he doesn't have a gun, so it just freaks out and makes him stand still. And of course, if you wait for him to finish vomiting, he just returns to his chair. I'll kill him. There's gotta be a way. There's always a way. Think, Saeed, damn it, think! If 47 dies while performing any agility action, then no death animation will play, and 47 will be free to ragdoll like any other NPC for a few seconds. Most large items are dropped when you try to climb with them, but for whatever reason, 47 just doesn't drop stuff when he's climbing out a window. This means that you can climb anywhere that's connected to a window with this climbing animation, and bring everything but a briefcase with you. Many of the diegetic songs that are in the game can continue playing in the pause menu. This includes the bar music in Paris, the music in the racer paddocks in Miami, and even Ave Maria when played from the Seeger 300 Advanced. Though this doesn't apply to the club music in either Berlin or Miami's VIP lounge. Of course, if the normal soundtrack is more your game, have you tried going into your inventory? This makes whatever track the game is playing repeat its loop, so if you're a fan of the suspicion or combat music in a level, just trigger it, pop open the inventory, and enjoy this game's lovely soundtrack, albeit at a slightly muffled volume. And that concludes today's episode of Facts and Features. I hope you feel that you've become a better Hitman player today, or at least a more knowledgeable one. Feel free to like, etc., and maybe even share this video with any other Hitman players you know. If you don't know any others, perhaps you could join our Discord server and make some friends. Thank you all very much for watching. I've been Cassie, and have a nice day. level of stress and tension in your body language. If you'd like me to prescribe you a mind sedative, I'd be happy to assist.